Uh, hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 2 of Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles. So you'll probably notice that uh, I've changed my field of view to the default, uh, whatever it is in Minecraft, normal. I think that's 70 degrees? So, I had someone mention on in the, in the YouTube comments that the high FOV does indeed make people sick. So let me know if you prefer this FOV or what it was before. I'll probably, about halfway through the episode, change it back just for comparison purpose. But um, yeah, let me know what you prefer. Secondly, it is getting nighttime, so let's sleep before we have any mob spawn. I've done some mining between episodes, and it's become increasingly apparent to me that we can't just build on the ground here. Because if ever, like more than one or two skeletons spawn at night and I come back here, it's a fight for my life just to be able to uh, use my base. So that's not very good. And third of all, I built something. So last episode I mentioned the squeezer automation. Well, here it is. So I went and gathered a couple of slime blocks from a slime island. You can see it's over there. And... I, the, the rest of this is just vanilla redstone. So it uses a timer. And I looked at the recipe for, you know, the modded timers, and none of them were um, simple. So instead of trying to, you know, scrounge together all the resources to, to build something like this, right, like we need a lot of these red alloy ingots or something, I just built a vanilla timer. You know, 50% duty cycle, you tune the timing based on the repeaters. So the way it works is, when you turn it on, we have a hopper, an omnidirectional hopper feeding into the squeezer. It gives it ores, and then the squeezer uses an armor stand that gets pushed down by a slime block to uh, do the squeezing, and the outputs go into a chest. Uh, that That's the gist of it. That, uh, pe that planks up there I don't think is actually necessary. Um, and the important thing to note is that you want to reset the squeezer a couple takes later than you reset the piston, you know, to give the piston the time to rise. I think this actually only needs to be on two ticks. If you set it too low, see if it works at two ticks. So yeah, if you set it too low, you can see that the armor sand doesn't fully rise. So I guess two ticks isn't long enough. If you set it on three, it seems to work. But uh, there's no benefit of setting it to three versus four. It's no faster. Um, we can probably reduce the total cycle time to be a little bit more efficient, but honestly, this is totally fine. So, this will automate the process of turning ores into pulverized ores. Nice. So today, what I'm thinking is I want to... Well, I guess first of all, I need to figure out what to do about where I'm going to live. I like this biome. I love this green grass. Um, the trees are nice. But living on the surface like this is just going to get me killed. So my options are we can either dig a little hole, you know, underground, perhaps part of our mining cave. Um, or we can live until either we can set up like fences or walls or like other turrets in this pack. We do have the turret mod, the uh, open modular turrets, which is pretty cool. We can use that to, you know, make like laser turrets to defend our base. But that's probably a ways off, right? Just looking at what these turret bases take. Well, tier 1 bases aren't far off, but yeah, even tier 2 bases and the laser ones like a tier 5. It's super cool, but it takes draconium and ozzel gloss, apparently. So, you know, that can be a future plan. But for now, I'm thinking instead of building underground, why don't we just build above ground, like up? So think of it kind of like Skyblackish, right? If we build a, uh, a platform up in the sky, it doesn't have to be that high up, maybe 10, 20 blocks. We can light up the platform. Any mobs that spawn down here will have a hard time shooting it just because we're so far up. And I really hope mobs can't climb ladders because if they can, we're going to have to come up with some more eloquent elevator system. Although we could just use, you know, these open blocks elevators. Although apparently even these recipes are changed. Alright, whatever. Not too bad. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking we'll build a uh, small platform up slightly, you know, 20-ish blocks. We can still use grass so we get this rich green color. I'll probably leave this contraption down here because it's super loud and I'll turn it off for now for my sanity. But um, cool. The other goal I want to have for today is I want to... 
I want to build the Tinker's Smeltery. So at least I want to unlock that quest line, which is here. And to do so, we have to build some things. Let's see. Oh, we may as well build the wooden hook. This is simple enough. Let's do this right now. This is just a cool, like, oh. So much for it being simple. All right. Looks like it's some crafting steps, but it doesn't look like it's anything we don't have. Let me get some materials, and uh, we can build ourselves that hook. Here we go. So here's our hook. And do we have, actually, do we have upgraded hooks available? I wonder. The wooden hook is decent. You know, it's simple. It's functional. Uh, but the higher tier ones, I think the ender hook is personally my favorite. That's not happening anytime soon. The red hook is also quite good. Also not happening anytime soon. All right, so if we want, we can upgrade to a iron hook, which is just a relatively large amount of iron later. But let's show you how the wooden hook works. So the starters, I think it says we can equip any bobble slot, and we can hit C. Hit C to fire a hook that'll just pull us up. And I think we can likewise use it to go down. And then press C again to disconnect. There's a key to disconnect hooks. I don't remember what it is, but uh, let's look it up. Fire hook is C. Huh. You just left click? You left click the hook itself? What is it? Give me a second to figure out how to unhook myself real quick. Alright, there we go. So it's jump to retract all hooks. And shift plus C to retract just that one. So there we go. And the uh Wooden hook is nice, but it doesn't have very much range. Problem. All right. Well, mostly I did that for the quest. Some choices. Um, I'll take the sapling. Does it need to be in my inventory? All right. Next, we need some sawdust. I think sawdust is easy. It's just like a mortar and pestle and some wood. I already made one of these. So 15 and I think you need a 27 total. Very good. Now give me a coin. Oh, give me both. Some redstone, which I've already gotten. Compressed sawdust. I think that's just. Yeah. Three by three of sawdust. Cool. A, a melon. All right. And now we can make the tool station, which I think is, you know, how we get into Tinker's construct. What does this take? Three blank. Ah, uh, that's why we needed the sawdust. I see. The rest is just a bunch of wood, two silicon plates, and an iron plate. All right. So let me gather some materials so we can build that. That ought to do it. And we can now take our first step into Tinkers. And a rare loot bag see what's in there i think mobs can drop these too and we can set up a mob farm later to get these so these probably aren't too spectacular can we turn these back into iron ingots and turn it into an iron nugget i can melt it into four ingots later all right i'll take it so that should open up this quest chain and now we have to make the other uh the other tinker stables. So uh, that's a part builder. Uh, looks like they're all built in in this. So I need another silicon plate and some copper. All right, I'll do the crafting off camera and I'll be right back. Here's all the components we need. So let's set up our basic tinkers setup. I like to have a crafting station, although strictly speaking, it isn't required. 
but uh, it makes it easy to access all the stuff together. Uh, where do we start from? Let's see. You need a stencil table, a pattern chest. You want where the oh, you want your part builder next to the pattern chest, and then your tool station at the end. Now, at some point, we'll want to upgrade our tool station to a tool forge, but that looks a little complicated, right? We'll have to build this. Well, the blacksmith workshop doesn't look too bad. We'll have to supply it with a gas. And of these, I think methane's the easiest to produce. We can just make it from biomass or hummus if we can produce this. Either way, that doesn't look too bad. But the hard part is it takes a comfortable amount of steel and a little bit of ovium. Ovium? which this has to be made in, there's a long process to make it, I think. I guess we can get it out of legendary loot bags, but uh, it's made from like vanadium and galena. So vanadium comes from rock hounding and you have to get the chemical vanadium. And there's a bunch of steps that uh, I don't quite understand yet. So when we get into rock hounding, we'll figure out how to do that. But for now, that means we only have access to a tool station, which means we get, you know, Tinker's pickaxes, um, Mattox, bows, short bows, uh, battle science, etc, etc. So the quest wants us to make these patterns, so let's do that. I think I have enough blanks. What was it? Pick, axe, shovel, rod, and binding. So we can just take it and put it directly into the pattern chest, which is convenient. Is that it? Of course, now that I've put them in the pattern chest, I have to take them out to complete the quest. Alright, so that's that quest. I think we're getting pretty close to being able to do the smeltery now, I hope. Looks like the smeltery is up here, so we're, we're working our way there. Alright, and now it wants us to make it out of flint. Sure, do I have enough flint? Somehow I doubt it. Is there an easy way to make it? I guess if we make the sifter, we can... Okay, so let me go get us a little bit more flint. So I think it wants us to make the all the heads out of flint. Let's do that. Oh, hold on. It takes six to make a pickaxe head. Huh. I didn't know you could change these values. I mean, normally these take a... Uh, three or one i don't know definitely not six anyways and then the rods and bindings i think it wanted out of wood these only take okay all right that should complete that quest i think it wants us to make a pick a hatchet and a shovel i wouldn't really be making these tools if it weren't for the quest but oh well so there's that. That and that. That gives us an iron pickaxe head. So actually, let's just directly upgrade this into an iron pickaxe head. Because for now, this will be actually our highest binding level tool. Our stone pickaxe can't mine a bunch of stuff like diamonds. Alrighty, so where do we want to go with this? Let's start at the top because this is the one called smeltery. But we need a bunch of clay, sand, and gravel. And there's no way I have enough of that yet, so I'm going to have to go digging. Let me clear out my inventory and go uh, let's raid the riverbed. Thankfully, there's a desert right there, so plenty of sand. There's even a desert temple where I got some uh, TNT from. But yeah, I'm going to go gather up the resources we need to make ourselves the smeltery. Took a little while, but now we have, hopefully, enough materials to make all the grout we need to at least make a small smeltery. Once we get started, well, that's a lot. Once we get started, uh, we can start smelting cobblestone into steered stone. So this makes six per. Yeah, that should be enough. 200, okay. Cool. So um, 
Yeah, turn all these into bricks. That'll take a little while. So I'll make uh, I'll make a couple more furnaces. But even then, I'll I'll see when this is done cooking. In the process of cooking up all of that grout, I realized I ran out of coal and charcoal. So I think it's about time that we started up our first charcoal kiln. So the way that works is if we take these wood piles, which they themselves are just eight blocks of or eight of any wood and then cover them completely in one of these materials when they burned you know when they burned to completion we get this much charcoal out of it so for the time being i took a quick look through our options and i think dirt is really the best we can do and stone would be better but you know we can't get that yet and some of these other resources we just don't have we don't have enough clay dirt's better than gravel we don't have nether rack yet or ash so anyways, the way this works is we put down the wood. Wow, that grass spread quickly. Also, is it getting nighttime? It appears to be. So um, we put down the wood, cover it completely with dirt, with the exception of one block. So let's see if we can get this done before nighttime falls. And then we grab our flint and steel, which I don't have. So let's go sleep, and then I'll go get that. One second. Hopefully we beat the mobs. Good. All right, so I have a flint and steel in one of these. I do need to get organized at uh, some point. So we grab our flint and steel and we light that one piece that's exposed on fire. Before it burns, we cover it with more, you know, with dirt. And if you can see there's still particles coming out, that means it's working. So this uh, wood pile will continue to burn for, I don't know, I expect maybe 30 minutes, somewhere in that time frame. And when it's done, we can come here and harvest it. And from each charcoal pile, we'll see that, or from each uh, wood pile, we should get 11 pieces of charcoal from eight pieces of wood. Cool, so this is a way that we can pretty efficiently convert wood into charcoal. Pretty loud, so I hope that's far enough away that I don't have to hear it sizzling all day. But, uh. It looks like in the time I was preparing that, most of our grout has finished. I have 22 pieces left, so let's just throw it somewhere to cook. Alright, so coming back to here, that should complete this quest. Cool. Next up, uh, oh, it looks like we still have to do some of these. Oh, this is a nice reward. Give me some copper. Um, looks like it wants me to make bronze. All right, so I need 18 copper ingots. I should have that. Let me just uh, knock some of these quests out, and I'll be right back. I had to go mining for some more copper, but eventually I have... Uh, a fair chunk of copper and tin now so i think the next thing the quest wants us to do is to mix it together to make bronze it seems whoopsies it seems mixing bronze by hand is pretty ineffective but not the recipe um oh that's what it was let's see oh it's shaped okay so there we go so for six inputs, you only get four outputs. But for now, I guess that's what we have to work with. When we start making it in like an alloy kiln or something later, it'll be more efficient. Just give me a little bit more bronze. We can turn it into plates, all right. So that'll take a bit of smelting. Now it seems I am basically out of, um, you know, charcoal and stuff. So let's see if this is done. Appears to be so. We're mining for about half an hour, so. So yeah, what's what we have here is now ash, and when we break the ash, we get a a lot of charcoal and a little bit of this ash. I think we can turn the ash into compost, which we'll use to or ash bricks, which I think can be. I guess first I'll turn some into ash bricks to increase our charcoal yield, but later we can turn it into compost, which will be a component in making this biomass, which we can squeeze into methane. All right, so let me harvest all of this, um, and then I'll cook up that, uh, that bronze into the ingot form. 
the bronze plate quest gives uh, an interesting reward. I think I'm going to take the mana steel plates just because that's the only one I can't make yet. But I'm curious if uh, if that means we're going to need to be getting into Batania pretty soon. Anyways, moving on. Now we can make our casting table and casting basin. I assume this is what the bronze was for? Yeah. Alright, easy enough. And I guess that's also part of the reason why we needed so many seared ingots. Or seared bricks. Alright, um... What does brass, what is that made of? This is one part copper to three parts aluminum. And can I melt bauxite ore into aluminum? Doesn't look like it. And what is brass made of? One part zinc or silver to two parts copper? Mm, okay, that's easy enough to make then. Um, yeah, I don't know what I want. Give me the coins. Alright, we're not quite ready for that yet. Now we have to make electro tin. So that's redstone, pulverized copper, and sawdust. Interesting. I've been looking for electro tin before. I thought it world gens like normal, but I guess not. So I have some copper dust. I need redstone dust and sawdust, which is just a bunch of wood. All right, let's make some of that. Uh, my mortar doesn't seem long for this world. Routine's all it's got. It's enough for the quest. Silicon. So mix redstone sawdust and pulverized copper to paint an electrotin. Ah, all right. That doesn't seem too bad. I guess give me more iron. Copper? Doesn't really matter, right? Mix electrotin with iron ingot, sure. With that. Is there a better way of making this by chance? Nope. On, just one. Give me more silicon. And then I think we just smelt it. I'm going to just be wasteful and use a whole piece of charcoal to smelt one item. I know, I know, I'm an awful person. Here, I'll smelt a second one once I complete the quest. There, I, I use a piece of charcoal to smelt two items. Now look at my efficiency. Alright, so the inductive furnace is just like a... Okay. So I think this is the crafting component. Right, it's crafting recipe isn't too bad, but for now, like it can smell items, but I think we want to use it to make the smeltery. Alright, so I just need some bricks. Good thing is, I think I started making some bricks earlier. Look at me thinking I had. Ooh, it takes nine to make this? That's unfortunate. Oh well, nothing to be done. Our inductive furnace need these. And with that, I think we are finally ready to make our smeltery. So let's grab all the components we've already gotten, both from quest rewards and crafting. And let's see how big of a smeltery we can make. So first off, we need the controller. Oh, what's missing? More seared bricks. And what is compressed stone? Uh oh, I guess I have to cook up charcoal. Okay. Um, looks like we need a little bit more time on the uh, on the furnace, and I might even be out of cobblestone. All right, so I'm gonna go dig up some more cobblestone and then cook it into stone, and uh, I'll be back when we're ready to make that controller. Here we have it, our smeltery controller. So, in addition to the controller, table, and basin, we need a tank. 
takes a couple pieces of glass, that doesn't look too bad. If I can find where I have sand. At some point, I'll organize things. I might have used all my sand. Gosh darn it. Alright. Well, you know what? Let's just rip up this beach. Look at that. The water even fills it up to make source blocks again. Alright, let's cook a little bit of sand. And uh, I'll be back when it's done. Alright, class is done. So let's build the tank. And I think this is the... Well, not quite. It's almost the last component, right? We need a, at least one... Rain, I think is what it's called. Well, I guess we need faucets. So I may as well build these. It looks like it's night time. So yeah, we need a couple faucets and a drain. But it's a smelter drain. Alright, game. Just randomly nest that recipe there because that really adds value. And I think a single drain is all we need for now, but we do need a couple fun. All right, so I was gonna build it up in the sky, but since I dug out this, uh, you know, this area while just more or less digging for cobble, I guess we'll put it down here, right? So how many bricks do we have? That'll really be our determining factor. Only 24. We might have to start with like a three by three smeltery. Do I have any bricks left up on the crafting table? Oh good, I have plenty of brick up here. So this should be enough to make at least a 3x3 smeltery. And once we, uh, once we have a smeltery going, we can far more easily turn stone into, or cobblestone, into seared stone. So let's just build this. Now, one thing that we need to do um, is automate the pouring, which is most easily done with a timer. But uh, since, you know, the, like the actual timers we saw earlier have pretty complicated recipes, we might have to set up a, like a vanilla style redstone timer again, which isn't the end of the world. It's a bit of an ugly contraption. So anyways, let's see. Let's put our controller here, our tank here. We'll have to fill that tank with lava, of course. And where is a good place to put our drain? This here is fine. If we put the drain here, we can put our two faucets. And a basin and a table. All right, and we have to add some hoppers to automate all this, but um, let's start off by just making more seared bricks so we can make this a bigger smeltery because as great as a 3x3 is I'd rather have a larger smeltery so the beauty of this is instead of having to make grout to uh, to make more seared brick we can now make this seared stone by melting down any stone or cobblestone I think we get the same amount let me see if there's something better we can melt but I don't imagine so Hmm. No, that's the same. Never mind. I said, can we melt stone rods? But it doesn't look like it. All right. So yeah, it looks like the best we can do is just uh, let's get a bunch more stone, pour it in here, melt it. Uh oh, can we not melt? We have to turn this into. Yes, we have to chisel it into normal stone. That's really annoying. How. The entire world is made of these like variant cobblestones, but we can't use them in normal recipes. All right, whatever. Let me go uh, turn that into normal stone then, or normal cobblestone. Here we go. So we can put our stone in. Oh, that blue mean derp derp. It means I don't have fuel in the thing. All right, that's entirely my fault. So let's grab this tank and go fill it up. 
Um, I think the closest source of light. Well, we can either go down for lava, or we can head over to that uh, that meteor that crashed not too far away. It just happened to be the type that spawns with a lava pool around it. And I guess we can come here and get regular cobblestone too. So, anyways, let's fill up seared tank with some lava. I wonder if can we. Whoa. That's scary. Uh, apparently mobs spawn out of it. And that really hurt. I might die here just trying to fill our darn tank up. Uh, doesn't look like there's actually much lava here. Take it from this pool, whatever. Ow. I dislike everything about this game right now. I'm just gonna come hide down here where hopefully he doesn't shoot me. Alright, finally, some lava in peace. Let's head back and we can, uh, I take back what I said about the different types of cobble, I guess. But anyways, um, I took a look at that timer recipe again and now that I look at it, now that we have a few more resources, I think we can pull off the redstone clock here. Fundamentally, it's a bunch of silicon, which isn't that bad. That's just, uh, sand, coal, clay, sawdust, and a little bit of, well, and a lot of redstone. But the trick about redstone is that there are, because there's uh, the bees mod, there are resonating hives that spawn underground, and each resonating hive spawns with like a stack of redstone blocks around it, which makes it quite easy to actually just get a lot of redstone. So instead of setting up another one of these large vanilla timers, how about I'll just bite the bullet, set up a couple of, or build a couple of redstone clocks, and then we can automate this smell tree entirely. So... There we go. Now we can start melting cobblestone. I'll have to make a couple of hoppers as well. So let me go get all the components we need to automate this and uh, we'll set that up. Before we can automate anything in the smeltery, really, we have to make the molds. So I looked at the various recipes and I think using brass, which is a two to one copper to silver ratio, is the best we can do. And the smeltery in this pack does ore double, which is nice, which means we no longer have to use our very loud squeezer unless we want dusts for some reason so anyways once this is in this will make our our brass and we can take the brass and pour it onto an ingot here that should make our first cast so the quest book asks for let's see there's an ingot cast it also wants pickaxe axe head shovel and tool rod so let me go make those while i wait for uh our silicon to cook. The other casts it wants us to make are sword blade and wide guard so that we can start making Tinker's weapons. Hopefully that means we can have a better weapon than our uh, stone tool here. Although six damage isn't awful, especially for stone. So anyways, that gives us... Uh, I've been holding off on claiming rewards just because they tend to... Well, they've been just filling my inventory up to no end. So now, oh boy, it wants to make a lot of these things. Um, you know what, let's do it. So this is just, let's see how much bronze this will take. Six. The axe head is another six, so that's twelve. Double head. He's all taking six annoys me. Twelve, eighteen, twenty-two, twenty-three bronze. In, or, uh, twenty-three bronze. Which, unfortunately, I think we can't make exactly 23, so I'll have a little extra. But uh, let's go make that. So bronze being a 3 to 1 of copper to tin. So we want 6 tin and 18 copper, if my top of the head math is correct.
and that should make enough bronze. While we're at it, I should have enough seared bricks left to make this uh, too tall smeltery. So at least we can melt all this at the same time. Oh no, I still can't. Never mind. Um, do I have? I don't have enough to make it three tall. All right. So, anyways, that'll melt. In the meantime, I think our our uh, silicon should be done. So, take these silicon bools. We can cut them with our saw. Bunch of silicon wafers, which we can hammer into silicon plates. Now we need silicon for a bunch of things, but first off, I just want to make a few clocks. So that's eight per, so we need 16 of these. Oops, that broke our hammer. Let's get another one. I think I had another one. Doesn't look like... All right, inventory is a good to say. Oh no, it's in my inventory. The managing my inventory is a total disaster. Anyways, this will take a couple other components. So let me, I'll, I'll just procure all of this off camera while, uh, while our bronze cooks. Our redstone clocks are done. So for those that don't, for those of you that don't know, the way this works is that when the, when these uh, faucets, when they receive a redstone rising edge, they begin delivering fluid. Um, if the fluid can be delivered into the cast. There we go. So the way uh, these redstone clocks, every second for like a tick or two, they pulse, you know, a high redstone signal. So all that it takes then is combining uh, a redstone clock with the faucet. It'll automatically pour into the table. And then all you have to do is automatically extract the item from the table with like a hopper. And if this were like an ingot cast, it would just keep casting, you know, whatever it is. Now, to turn it off, all you need is a lever. I made these, really not. You put a lever on the clock to turn the clock off. So when the clock is off, the, the faucets don't receive redstone ticks, and thus it doesn't automatically pour. Pretty cool. So um, I made some copper tool rods, and I want to use these to upgrade or to make a set of bronze tools. Specifically, I want to make a bronze matic and upgrade our pickaxe. So uh, right now I'm making the pan and the sharpening kit cast just because the quest asked for it. I don't know if we'll actually end up using them. I think the pan, actually the battle pan, makes for a pretty good weapon. So we'll probably use it at some point. But anyways, now that we have these tool rods, let's go upgrade our tools. I like the copper tool rod because uh, it gives the well-established trait. Which means that whenever you break a block, you have a chance of getting a small amount of EXP. It's not like a tremendous amount of EXP or anything, but I don't know, free EXP is free EXP, right? So we can upgrade the tool rod on our pickaxe. I think the durability will go up a tiny bit. About the only change, we get the well-established trait. Cool. And I want to make a matic, which is just a tool rod, a axe head, and a shovel head. And this basically combines a... Uh, axe and a shovel in one. Oh, and we can upgrade the we can upgrade the pickaxe head on this, right? Yeah. So that'll give it a lot more durability, almost double the durability. Um and it mines marginally faster. I'll take it. All right, so now we have some much better tools. We also do have all the components to make a broadsword, so we might as well, right? Um, I don't know what tool rod I want, but I guess I'm not allowed to use a stick as a tool rod. So let's go. I, I think I have a spare bronze one. May as well just use it. Alright, so now we have a real weapon too. Only 4.62 damage. I expected better. What is this? This is six. Wait. 
Oh, our sword's worse than our... Oh, that sucks. It's also a slower attack speed. I guess we won't really be using this bronze, uh, broadsword then. I guess it has sweep, but I don't know. Whatever. So we, we made it. Um, so let me go ahead and finish automating our smeltery. That'll just take a couple, uh, you know, chests and hoppers, and then we'll probably wrap up this episode here. I think getting the smeltery done is a pretty big accomplishment. It provides a much easier way of doing, you know, true ore doubling than our Weezer was doing, right? This is only getting 1.75x. So let me go craft up another batch of compressed iron so we can make... Let's steal. Uh, compressed iron so we can make a couple more hoppers, and I'll be right back. So using some of that TNT I nabbed out of the Chung or the desert temple over there, we can make... Oopsies. We can make uh, compressed iron. Because explosions are disabled in claim chunks, it doesn't, you know, actually put a hole in the ground. So you see how we gave it 64 iron, we only got 50 compressed iron. That's the loss you take when you make it with uh, TNT. But for now, that's all we can do. I actually kind of wonder, is there, there's compressed iron armor, isn't there? Can I make a set of armor out of this? Or is there only the helmet? It doesn't look like I can make the armor out of it. All right, whatever. It was worth a check. Anyways, so I needed this to make hoppers, because the regular hopper recipe is disabled, but we can still make omnidirect hoppers. I think I need three of these. And the way that'll work is, we'll have one to use to feed ores into there. Downside about omnidirectional hoppers is it can be a little tricky to place. Because you have to get both the top and the, you know, the pointy side pointed right. And then a couple chests here. There we have it. One fully automated smeltery. So now uh, what I can do is get our ingot cast, put that there. And anything I melt, I can just turn this on and it'll automatically cast it into ingots for us. And for now, that means we can make a lot of seared brick so we can make our smeltery taller. And probably a little bit wider while I'm at it. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I did record this entire episode in the, you know, standard, standard field of view, right? So let me know where it is. This at normal FOV, let me know how you like it compared to the 103 that I've been using before. Personally, I prefer the 103, but um, you know, if it makes viewers like uh, motion sick, then not worth it. So yeah, give me your opinions on that. And uh, besides that, I hope you liked the episode and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.